Hey church, it's great to be back with you as we go through the book of Galatians together. I'll be in chapter 4, verses 6 through 11 today. So let's go ahead and read that together. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Guys, this passage is all about our relationship with God. And Paul is amazed here that these Galatian believers would uh, rather be slaves than sons. And unfortunately, we all have this, this um, tendency to be more slave-minded than son-minded when it comes to our relationship with God. I know I, know I do. Let's, let's read verses 6 and 7 again. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Guys, there is so much in these two two verses here that we could literally talk about it for weeks. But the first thing I want us to see is that there is no relationship without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mentioned 18 times in the book of Galatians. And here he's referred to as the spirit of his son. Jesus said, I, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. And he sent us his Holy Spirit. And by his Holy Spirit, we can with confidence cry out to the God of the universe, the maker of heaven, heaven and earth. We can cry out to him and call him daddy. That is something a slave does not get to do. He does not get to call his master daddy. But we are no longer slaves, Paul writes. We are his sons and his daughters. And we get to, we get to enjoy this intimacy. That is a term of intimacy. It is a term of relationship and privilege. If you go to Israel today, you'll hear little children calling out to their fathers, Abba, Abba. It's, it's really cute. But it means we have this relationship with God given to us through Christ that we can never attain on our own. And why is that important? Why is that so important to know? Well, look at verse 7 and see how we've been given that right and that privilege through Christ. And we are now heirs of God. Guys, we will be joint. We are joint heirs with Jesus, as Paul writes in Romans 8. We will inherit the riches of heaven because we have been sealed. We have been given his Holy Spirit and we are now his sons. We've been adopted by a very, very rich father, and all the riches of heaven are ours. It's, it's something we can never comprehend, but it's, it's awesome just to sit and to meditate on what it means to be joint heirs with Jesus. Paul says in, in 8 and 9, let's read those again, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not God's, But now after you have known God or are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and the beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Paul's basically saying here, guys, before you knew God, you were a slave to the world. You were slaving away for the the world. You were slaving away for your flesh. And that's just how it is before someone is born again. There's really no choice. You are a slave to sin. You are a slave to your flesh. And Paul says, you knew what it was like to be a slave then. Why are you so quickly drawn back into that slavery mindset as it relates to your relationship with God? See, they weren't necessarily being drawn into uh, sin as it relates to slavery. They were being drawn into a a, uh, slavery of having the relationship with God based on their own works, based on the law. And the two, the two aren't even comparable. You can have a legal relationship with God, or you can have a 
personal relationship with God. And, and there's no comparison here. So I have, I have three boys and a girl. That's, that's four kids. That's crazy. I have, I have these children. And if one of them came to me and, and they brought me their, their weekly chore list, they have, uh, well, except for the baby, they all have a weekly daily chore list that they, they have to do. If one of them brought me their list and they said, they said, master, that wouldn't be so bad, but if they said, they said, master, I've done all my things. I've done my stuff. You can, you can now love me. I, I deserve it. I, that, that's terrible. That's like, no, you, that's not why I love you because you did your list, because you did your stuff. That's not why I love you. Or in, in the same way, if they, they brought me their list and said, master, I have, I have not completed all my, my list this week. Please don't don't curse me. Don't judge me. Don't cast me out of your, of your house. What a, what a terrible way to live. What a terrible relationship we would have. And as a father, that would be, that would be terrible. That would be heartbreaking. But I'll tell you, it would be more tragic for, for the son or for the daughter to be missing out on the blessing, to be missing out on the privilege and the love and the relationship that the father wants to have with them and trading that for a, a works relationship, trading that for a, a legal relationship. It's just not what God intended. Um, notice that Paul refers to this uh, as weak and beggarly elements. You know, he's referring, at least to some degree here, to the law of Moses. Weak and beggarly elements? Well, because anything that compared to the, the power and the riches we have in Christ as his true son or daughter, anything compared to that kind of relationship is, is weak and beggarly. Any kind of relationship that, that is separated from his spirit, that is separated from true sonship, that is weak and beggarly. And Paul wanted them to know that. He wants us to know that. Um, I want to look at verse 9 real quick. He says, you observe days, uh, sorry, verse 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years. And he's simply uh, referring to the fact that they're keeping, you know, they're keeping the Sabbath or they're, they're wanting to keep these, these feasts and, and all these things that are on the Jewish calendar. But those pale in comparison to the relationship that God has called us to with himself. I think about Matthew 12 when Jesus and his disciples were plucking heads of grain off on the Sabbath and the Pharisees are, are just wigging out about it. And they're like, how can you do this? And Jesus tells them that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And they're like, you know, what could be more important than the Sabbath? Well, the Son of Man for one, and he is Lord of the Sabbath. And Paul is just telling these, these, these Galatian believers here, Guys, you are missing it. There's something so much better than what you're trying to reduce your relationship with God to. In verse 11, he says, I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. And Paul had labored for them as he did for, for all believers he brought the gospel to. He, he had labored for them to the point of exhaustion. And he was afraid here. That he was afraid that the legalism and their desire to earn God's favor by their own works would, would make all of his work for naught. It could cost them their, their relationship with God. And that is a, that is a tragic trade-off. I think about uh, something I did when I was a, um, still living at home. I was probably, I don't know, 15 or so. My, my sister was 10 years younger than myself. She had this jar of, of money. Uh, she literally saved every dollar she ever got from birthdays, from uh, we, we raised goats and sheep, and she would keep that money, and, and, and she put those bills in her, her savings jar. And it was, it was like overflowing. And I had this idea that since she didn't really know what she had, I would trade her a handful of pennies and nickels and dimes and see if she would trade that jar of cash for those, those coins. And I brought it to her and I said, hey, 
would you trade me that, that jar of you know, useless paper bills for this handful of, of money? And she's like, duh, that's a no-brainer. Of course I will. And she traded something that was so valuable for something that was, you know, basically, basically useless. And of course, I gave it back to her. I mean, that, I, wasn't, I wasn't that sick. I just wanted to see if she would, she would do it. But guys, there is, there is something so tragic here uh, as we read this, this book that, that people and ourselves are sometimes willing to trade a, the, a beautiful relationship that we are called to by the Holy Spirit, a relationship with God that is, that is one of sonship, we are willing to trade that for something that pales in comparison, and that is a workspace relationship. And the thing that makes this so dangerous is that a, a works relationship with God uh, it often appears to be very, very spiritual. It often feels very, very spiritual. And we, and we see that with the Pharisees. They were looked at as very, very spiritual and right with God, but yet their hearts were far from Him. We see in Revelation chapter 2, the church of Ephesus, Jesus writes to them, he says, I see your works. You know, I see all these things you're doing, these things you're doing right and well, but you, you've lost your first love. You've, you've given up your first love. And even though you're doing these works and doing these things, you are missing it. And guys, that's something we're all capable of doing, doing right things to earn God's favor, to earn relationship, when he's just simply called us to be his sons, to be his daughters, and to cry out to him, Abba, Father. What a, what a privilege that is. And that's something Paul wants us to know today. So I hope you are blessed by this passage, uh, and I encourage you just to be his sons, be his daughters, and just revel in that relationship. Love you guys.